garden manager here at Heart Village um, and today we are going to be making our seed trays for our fall annual vegetable gardens. So what we have here um, is a seed tray mix of coconut core and vermiculite um, and this is it's a very fine texture so it's good for the, the little tiny seeds that are growing from it versus this it's dry but this is more of a potting soil mix when you're moving it up to the four inch pots um, and it's a lot more coarse and it has the perlite in it um, to allow the root, roots to grow um, and have more air and more nutrients. And so the next step is to get it wet. It comes very dry um, and we don't want it to repel water. Once it becomes hydrophobic, hydrophobic, it repels water. And so before we put in the seed trays, we want to re-wet the soil so it's soaked up and will absorb more water as we water it. So after you've got the water in, you want to take it, a handful, and squeeze it. And about drops should come out, just a dribbly drop. Ideally one drop comes out and then it's good because you want it to be moist, but you don't want it to be dripping wet. Okay, so in your, um, in your seed tray mix, you wanna mix fertilizer because this, this has no nutrients in it. This is gonna be the only nutrient source the seedling has until we move it into a bigger pot. The most important thing is the numbers that you'll find somewhere on the bag on here, it, here it's right here, NPK, and the number you're looking for is five to six. That's the most important part when you're looking for an organic fertilizer to put into the seedling mix. For this amount, we're going to put in about two to three cups of fertilizer and we'll mix it in very thoroughly. Okay, so here's our seed trays. We have the seed tray that's here, has the holes in the bottom, and then we use these trays that have the ventilation so the water can go through. Because um, here it's very hot, very humid, um, and we want the water to drain out. So we top water, we don't bottom water, so the moisture doesn't get trapped underneath. So we use the holes, the seed tray, this helps keep it secure. And we use the 72 cell. Um, it gives the seed enough space without being too much soil for the nightshades. We use this cell and it, it's a great size. First thing we wanna do, put the tray in here, scoop up the dirt, and fill all of the cells, making sure to not miss the corners. The corners get missed, so we wanna make sure we get those as well. Now, they appear full, but there is gonna be a lot of air in there. So we wanna take each cell and just very gently push down to eliminate any air pockets. That way all cells uh, have even depth and texture and they're not too compact or too aerated. You can see this one poke down a little bit further. That's what I was talking about where it's more compact or more airy than say this one which is more compact. So now that we've pushed them all down, we'll scoop this again and do a nice light layer on top. Making sure to get all the edge and the corner cells as well. And then we have our seed tray. Okay, so the seeds we're planting today are one of our staples, uh, Mountain Magic tomatoes. And Every time, anytime you want to plant something, you always want to make sure you label it. Label it, label it very clearly. So here we have found that old mini blinds make the absolute best labels for anything, really. Because with just a number two pencil, and that's the only thing we found that doesn't wash off. Even permanent marker washes off in the rain here. So this is what we use to label our trays. And you want to put what you're planting here we have a lot of people, so we also put who planted it and by initials, and then also, very important, the date you planted it. Let's stick that here. 
And to plant the seeds, the first thing we do is we take the tip of that pencil, the eraser tip, and we mark each spot with just a tiny indentation about the size of the eraser. For tomato seeds, pepper seeds, etc., that's all that you want is just that tiny little bit of eraser depth. Okay, next we are putting the seeds into each cell. For this seed in particular, it's a more expensive seed because it's an F1 hybrid, and also it has good germination rate, I already know. So I'll put one seed per cell. If you know it's going to be a lower germination rate or the seeds are inexpensive, you can put two or even three seeds per cell and select the best one once they sprout. Also, when taking them out of the package, you don't want to take out more than what you're going to use. There's more seeds in the packet than cells in here, so I'm not going to pour all of them in my hand. You can always dump more out, but to put them back in will decrease the germination rate in the future. Okay, now that we have the full seed tray, each cell has one seed, we're going to close them up. And by doing that, we simply pinch, pinch, flatten. And the tap is very, very light, almost like you're touching a bubble, trying not to pop it. It's a very light touch. So pinch, pinch, tap, pinch, pinch, tap. Sometimes I will do all of the pinching first and then go back and tap afterwards. The last step is to make sure your seeds stay watered, especially before they sprout because they need to be damp, not wet, while they're sprouting. Here in the greenhouse where we have them kept safe from any rain or they're just protected here in the greenhouse, it's very hot this time of year. So we will be watering it twice a day to keep that top layer damp uh, while they sprout and while they're growing. This is, the first stages, they're very tender, they need a lot of attention. So for watering, I use this watering can. I got it specifically for watering seed trays because the flow is very light and it won't knock the seeds out of their trays. Mm -hmm.